Good morning, everyone. So glad to be back, me and my wife, Lisa. Um, we went on a vacation with the kids and, and the, really, the whole, I mean, the kid, my kids. I got five girls. Four of them went. And then we had the grandchildren. These vacations are becoming bigger because now we have the grandchildren. And, and my, my four-year-old grandchild, his name's Xander, um, I didn't realize taking him was going to be a lot of work. <laughs> because he wants me to, like, carry him everywhere. Like, we, went, we went to Universal Studios, and he just, he just thinks I'm like, I don't know. I guess I'm his chair. I don't, but I'm walking around with him. I finally had to bribe him into, I, I got this, this, this rent-a-cart or whatever. <laughs> I go, look, he goes, I don't want, I want you to hold me. I go, if you go in there, I'll buy you a toy. And when I said that, he goes, okay, let's get the car. Go, let's go. <laughs> this, is, this is actually the, the one-year-old. His, his name is Zayden. And, and these times, I want to thank you for allowing us to spend time with our family. Because one of the things about, about life, if we, if we don't watch it, we could get so busy doing life that we forget about what the reason for life, and the reason for life is relationships. And I, and I, I don't want to thank you for giving us this time because I don't, I don't, I don't want to be, there's, there's my beautiful wife, Lisa, and, and there's my colorful shorts I bought. I'm being my Puerto Rican self on vacation. Uh, that's at Gatorland, so I took the kids to see the Gators and just kind of scare them a little bit. <laughs> but, uh, but thank you guys for allowing that because I, I want to I always make sure that I don't, I don't want to be one of those leaders or fathers or husbands that gets so busy saving the world and he loses his own family. So I, it, but we have to be aware of that. It's important. It's important to do life. It's important to work. It's important to make money. It, all that stuff, get an education, do sports, do activities, have hobbies. But be careful that as you're doing that, you forget about what's most important and the things that really matter you've neglected. How many understand that could happen? Not even realize, not on purpose, because I don't think any of us would do it on purpose, but, but it happens. And so we have to work on building our relationships, building our family life, building our spiritual life, and just making sure we're recharged so we can recharge, right? Sometimes you got to recharge so you could recharge and you don't get burned out. And, and, and I don't want to, I don't want to be, I don't want to have a wife at home that's miserable and think, yeah, you're over there saving the world and you're at home, you're not, but at home you're the devil. <laughs> right? I, I want a wife that, that looks at me as a hero. You know, she asked me something um, this week, um, last week, and the kids are asking me, um, do I want to run for president? Because they don't like some of the options. I go, well, no. I, I go, girls, I, I got a bigger call than that, right? I still got a bigger call than that. But, but the idea is, and I, I love that my wife and kids see me that way. That they actually see me as a hero that can do anything. And, and the real, I'm telling you, I'm, uh, the only reason there's any good in me is because my relationship with the Lord. I'm telling apart from him and... And his strength in my life, I, I, I'm nothing. And, and, and when we realize that, that you're not meant to be self-sufficient or self-made, that you're, you're created to have partnership, partnership with your creator of the universe. And until you have that partnership, if you're here for the first time, there's always going to be something missing. You'll never be enough. You'll never feel like enough because you're not enough. We need God to make us whole, to make us complete, and to make up the difference up. And how many understand we got weaknesses and we need, but the Bible says, you know what's so cool about it? Is God's strength is made perfect in your weakness. So any area that you're weak in, he goes, let me fill that with my strength. Let me fill that with my grace. Let me fill that with my intelligence, with my wisdom. I, I, had, um, I had someone um, text me, the, Max, Max, a matter of fact, it was Mike Cinderella. He, he texted me and and he's been bragging about our church since he came. And he was bragging about our church to his staff. And, and now he's having his staff call us. How do you guys make disciples, all that? And so he texts me this week. He goes, Pastor Marco, my, my staff thinks that you're a genius. <laughs> and I go, man, I told him this. I, and I text him back. I go, the Holy Spirit makes us all look like geniuses when we follow him. <laughs> I, I go, I am a Holy Spirit certified genius. 
What I mean by that is God's, come on, any genius in me is because of him. It's his strength. It's his wisdom. It's his direction. And he, he just makes us all look better. Isn't that true? Uh, well, we've been talking about the Holy Spirit. and Everybody's been doing a great job and kind of just staying online. And today I want to, this is going to be the conclusion of the Holy Spirit series. But today's sermon, I want to introduce you um, to this subject is how do I walk in the Holy Spirit? Like, I mean, so the whole, I'm going to introduce you your need for the Holy Spirit too. So why do I need the Holy Spirit? And if, if you're here for the first time, I'm going to break this down so simply you'll begin to understand it. We're also going to talk about our nature. Like what's our nature, our, our, our human nature, what's in our human nature and why we need God's help to become, uh, we need, I would say this, we're born with a human nature, but we're born again with a divine nature. And I want, I'm going to explain that to you in a minute because there's a lot of controversy um, and, and people say, well, I was born this way. And I understand whatever sin that you find you're, you're bent towards, you were born a sinner and that's, there's no doubt about it. But if you're ever going to like be able to overcome your natural birth human nature, you're going to have to have a born again experience. That means you're going to have to become a brand new person. I am not denying that you don't have a propensity to sin because every one of us do have a propensity to sin. But I'm going to tell you this. It doesn't matter what sin you lean towards. Stop making it your identity. You could be free. You could be whole. You could have a new life. You could have new desires and new power and live out a life you never imagined you could live. There's no addiction that you can't overcome. There's no lifestyle you can't overcome. There's no depression you can't overcome. There's no past you can't overcome. There's no abuse that you can't overcome. Because we serve a Lord and Savior that conquered. Come on, he conquered the grave. He conquered your mistakes. He conquered your sin. He conquered your past to give you a brand new life. And he wants to fill you with his spirit so you can do whatever you've been called to do. And you can finally say, greater is he that's in me than he that whatever I'm facing in this world. You can finally say, I, I can do all things through God's spirit, through Christ who lives in me. How many believe that through Christ you can do all things? There's nothing that you're limited to. So let's, let's pray and let's dive into this subject. I'm going to have a whole series in one service. It's going to be a miracle if I finish it. So pray for a miracle. Father, we just thank you, Lord. I thank for everyone that's online. I thank you for our wonderful church. I thank you for everyone that made a sacrifice to show up today. And we're here to learn about you. We're here to get to know you um, greater in a, in a greater way. We're here to find out our purpose and be empowered to fulfill it and, and have an encounter with your spirit to help us overcome our natural failures, our natural ability, our natural weaknesses. We need your supernatural intervention in our families, in our marriages, with our children. We need your help. And one of the names of the Holy Spirit is a helper. We need your help more than ever. We need our help in our country. We need our help in our, in our schools. We need your help in our lives, in our marriages, in our finances, in our bodies. We just need your help. And I thank you, Lord, that you are our helper. We're going to acknowledge you as our helper today. Help us this. Help us understand what's being taught today so it could change our lives, change our minds, and change our results. We give you all the honor and the glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay. So let's dive in and take your notes. And if you want to get the full notes, you could find it online at the Way World Outreach app. And, and you'll see the full breakdown of all the notes. So how do we walk in the spirit? Um, I'm going to dive into that with two, a concept that Jesus introduced. And Jesus introduced this concept, this idea of two births and two gifts. Two births and two gifts. In John 3, 5, it says... Jesus replied, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of, of God without being born of water and the spirit. So he talks about being born of water and he talks about being born of the spirit. He goes on to say this. Uh, he goes on to say, humans can reproduce only human life and that's true. And that, that really fights against the theory of evolution that actually a human or a, or a fish can actually or an ape can actually produce a human. Apes produce apes. Monkeys produce monkeys. Zebras pr produce zebras. And humans only produce human life. That's just basic biology. But the Holy Spirit gives birth. Now he talks about a second birth. Uh, birth uh, to spiritual life. And that means if you only have one birth, you have your human birth. 
But Jesus introduces the concept of a second birth, and it's called spiritual birth. Now, if you've not been born twice, understand this. He said you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven without the second birth. It's the spiritual birth. The spiritual birth is something that God's spirit does in you, and we're going to dive into that. The second birth is the most important birth because the first birth gets you to earth. The second birth gets you connected to God and gets you connected to, to eternal life and heaven. The first birth gets you into earth. The second birth gets you into heaven. You guys understand that. So birth number one is physical birth. All of us were born the same way through labor, the labor of a woman. Um, basic biology. Scientists have not been able to make lab-grown humans yet. So I can't ask you, hey, were you born of your mother or were you lab-grown? There nobody would say, I was lab-grown, bro. Right? You weren't lab-grown. You, this is basic biology. I know there's a lot of talk about these subjects because uh, there's a satanic agenda to get us confused about basic biology and truth. Look what the Bible says about birth. It, it, it makes, it's like, this, should, this shouldn't be controversial, but nowadays it is. In John 16, 21, uh, it will be like a woman suffering the pains of labor when her child is born. Uh, her anguish gives way to joy because she, who, she, not him, she has brought a new baby into the world. So how do babies get into the world? Basic biology. I know we have to cover this stuff because it's not even covered in school anymore. Women have children. <laughs> and that's how you came through the womb of a woman um, and through the labor of a woman. Our physical birth comes with a gift, and, and maybe you could call it a curse, from the devil. And it's called a sinful nature. That means that you were born with a sinful nature. I know the babies are cute. But babies are, um, when they're full grown and they're full of adults, you have to understand they're going to grow into full grown sinners. That's where they're going to grow. If they're not trained and they're not introduced to Jesus, I know you got a cute baby. And I'm going to give you an example. Just like a, a, a cute baby cub bear is cute. Until it grows up into a full bear. Right? Uh, a baby chimpanzee is cute. Until it grows up into a full-grown chimpanzee. It's scary at that point. <laughs> That's what it turns into. I mean, so basically, your little baby is a savage in the making. I'm just <laughs> because we're, baby, what you got, you have to understand, if you don't train them and you don't introduce them to Jesus Christ, you got a baby gangster. That's what you got. Right? You got a baby pervert. Where do these perverts come from? They started as babies. You got a baby liar. You got a baby criminal. Right? You got a baby hustler. You got a baby prostitute. I'm, I'm, what I'm saying is you got a baby addict. Unless you train them and understand what you birthed out and, you, you, and understand the sinful nature that you have, this is what's going to happen. You're going to raise, even though you're doing your best, and no matter how well you do it, without God intervening, your son or daughter has a sinful nature. And that sinful nature cannot be redeemed. That sinful nature cannot be, cannot be rehabilitated. You need, to, you need a, the second birth to handle that. So there was a, there was a I'm going to give you some examples of people that try to domesticate, domesticate the savagery of a wild animal. But before I read that, let's read, let's read um, Psalms 51, 5150. No, not 5150. 515. <laughs> it should be 5150. So our, our first birth comes with a gift from the devil, our sinful nature. We're all born the same as sinners. But this is what 5150 said. No, 515 says, for I was born a sinner. Yes. Yes. Like, yes. You were born a sinner. Um, from the moment my mother conceived me. That means soon as you were conceived, when the sperm hit the egg, it gave birth to a human with a sinful and demonic nature. Now, don't be deceived by the baby chimpanzee. 
Uh, there's a story about Travis, the chimpanzee. He was raised from, raised from infancy by his owner, Sandra, and appeared on TV with mul multiple times with her. On, in, tw in 2019, Travis, the, the chimp's wild nature, Travis, which is a chimp, Travis, uh, uh, sinful or wild nature came out. He initially stole her car keys and ran away. When he came back, he found his owner, Sandra, with a friend. She called, she called for help. The friend was holding the, the Tickle Me Elmo doll, which apparently arranged him. So his friend had the Tickle Me Elmo doll, which was his, and he got mad. He savagely attacked both his owner and Sandra, her friend. They called 911. When the police arrived, Travis ripped one of the doors off the police car, squad car, and eventually an officer had to shoot Travis in his rampage. Cute little chimpanzee. There's another story, Teddy the Black Bear. The Waltz family of Ellington, Pennsylvania, raised a, a 350-pound black bear since it was a cub. The bear attacked and killed Kellyanne Waltz while she cleaned his cage. She made the mistake of cleaning the cage while Teddy was still in it, which apparently set him off. Neighbor, neighbor, uh, neighborhood children saw the incident, and their father shot uh, Teddy. The last one, a cute little deer. It started as a cute little deer. Um, Texas resident Gerald Rushton kept a 500-pound red stack deer in a pen in his backyard. Despite the fact that deers are illegal to keep in Texas and extremely dangerous. Now, I understand Rudolph the Red-Nosed uh, Reindeer does not seem dangerous. Rushton was, attempting, Rushton, Rushton was attempting to domesticate the animal and kept it as a pet. The attempt failed as the deer gored and trampled Rushton to death. This just gives us an idea. Uh, there's, a, there's an old saying that you can't change the stripes of a tiger. And you cannot change the nature of a human being. The only one that could transform us and give us a new nature is God himself. And that's why when we take God out of school and we take God out of the, uh, of the conversation, all we're left with is a sinful nature and the hopelessness that we cannot change. And this is why a lot of people say, I tried to change, but I couldn't. Because you cannot change just like you can't change the wild nature of a savage or wild animal. You cannot change your nature. And either you're saved and born again or transformed by a miracle through the power of God. Or all you have is your sinful, savage nature. So you, that's all you have, right? So our sinful nature, um, this sin and... and this sin, people ask me all the time, well, if there's, if there's a God, um, why is there so much evil and is there so much crime and, and so much debauchery in this world? What's, what's all that about? And, and this is who's doing it. God's not doing all that craziness. We're doing all the abuse. We're doing all the lies. We're doing all the murders. We're causing all the wars. It's not God. It's our sinful nature. Where did where sin and death and destruction and all this horrible things come, abuse, where did it come from? Sin and death entered the world when the first man, Adam, sinned. So it came in through the first man, Adam. Um, it was through Adam, Adam's sin that Satan, check this out, was able to pass on his rebellious and sinful nature to mankind. So it wasn't just a sin transaction, it was a sin deposit. Satan was saying, how can I get into man? And what he did was he got man to listen to him. And when he got man to listen to him, to eat of the tree he shouldn't have ate, he not only listened to him, there was a transfer of spirit. That same spirit and Satan's nature entered into Adam's DNA. And from there, Adam is our great, 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 great grandfather. And through his sin, his nature Satan's nature was passed on to every single human being. In Romans 5:12, it says, When Adam sinned, when Adam what? Sin entered the world. Adam's sin brought death. So you can't have sin without consequence. All it means is death, death of the body. That means before Adam sinned, nobody died. You know, as I'm getting older, um, my body's not reacting the way it used to react. It's surprising me. Because if you would ask me last year, how do you feel? I go, I'm, I'm feeling good. 
I feel as young as ever. I, I could run. I could sprint. I could do anything. I could do push-ups. I was doing like 50 push-ups without stopping. I was rocking and rolling. But this is what happened. This year, all of a sudden, I started getting stiff. Like I started feeling like, man, I need to start stretching. Right? I, I rode my bike uh, um, uh, this year, six months ago. And I'm, I'm riding my bike, exercising, and I hit an oil slick on my bike in the middle of this uh, 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 intersection. I fell in the middle of this intersection. I'm sure somebody from the church saw me. <laughs> I tried to act tough, but I was hurting. Have you ever fell and you try to... <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to act like they hurt me. But I'm telling you, I was in pain. My hands were bleeding. My knees, my, I, my knees were hurting. But I tried to just get back on the bike. The bike didn't even work. <laughs> but this is what happened. Six months later, I, I still can't run on this leg. Uh, it's serious. But I'd be, I bet you if I was younger, I'd recoup a little quicker. But there's, there's something that entered the earth. Not only sin entered the earth, but sickness entered the earth. Death entered the earth. Cancer entered the earth. Everything bad that you can imagine entered the earth. The, the devil's nature entered the earth. And the Bible says that the, the, the God of this world is not even the, the, the heavenly father. It's the God of this world that's in charge of this world the way it is now is Satan. And that's what left to ourselves. We um, sin into the world and death spread to everyone and everyone sin. Who has a sin? There's no one that has a sin. We all sin. Our sinful nature is led by the spirit of the devil. Our sinful nature makes us talk, hate. Lie, cheat, cuss, be depressed, be confused, hopeless, anger, ang be angry, selfish, and lust like the devil. Mankind left to his own will continue to do more, be, to grow, to be more and more ungodly, evil, and demonic. I want to say, a, a society without God does not become better. A society with, without God becomes more ungodly, more evil, more immoral, and more crazy, 5150. Look at the change in our society. Uh, let's, let's read this scripture, and I'm going to show you an example of the Olympics just this week. In Ephesians 2.2, 2, it says, you used to live in sin. Now, it's describing someone with only their sinful nature, but it said, this is describing a person that's had the second birth. But he's describing before your second birth, this is how you used to live. You used to live in sin. You used to live as a liar. You used to live as a fornicator. You used to live used to live angry. You used to live addicted. You used to live as an alcoholic. You used to live full of anxiety. You used to, this is how you used to live. You used to live selfish. You used to, you, you, this is how, full of pride. Look, but just like the rest of the world, that's like everybody. So no one could judge nobody in here because without the Lord, we're all the same. How many understand that? Without the Lord, we're all the same. So I'm not dogging you if you have a sinful nature. I'm just letting you know I got a sinful nature too. And without the Lord in my life, I'm a womanizer. Without the Lord in my life, I'm fighting everybody I meet that looks me in the eye wrong. Right? I don't even, like, in Florida, I was driving to Florida on vacation. Like, you don't want to be driving to Florida and Puerto Rico. Because they use the, the horn like it's like a, a weapon. Like over there, like over here, use the horn. It's like offensive. Like, what, you want to fight? Right? But over there, they use the horn like, eh, bow, bow, bow. That's the way it is. <coughs> but look at this. Um, just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil. So when we have our, our, our sinful nature causes us to live in sin and obey the devil, the commander of the powers of the unseen world. He is the spear. Someone say, he is uh, at work. There's a spirit at work that's fighting against you, that's fighting against God, that has a plan to destroy you, has a plan to let, let you live this life without encountering Jesus as your Lord and Savior. He, he wants to confuse you even as you're hearing this message. He wants to interact and, and stop you from thinking and understanding this moment. He doesn't want you to change. And he wants you to die with just your sinful nature and be lost for eternity. Go to hell. Make your life a living hell. Destroy your marriage. Destroy your children. Destroy your future. Destroy your emotions. Destroy your job. Your finances. Destroy your body. 
body. He has a plan to kill, steal, and destroy. And if you don't understand the battle that you're in, and there's a devil that wants to control your life and destroy your life, you don't realize the battle you're in. You can't win it. He is a spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. Even as we're speaking, so watch out that there's not something in you that gets offended about this. You shouldn't be offended about this. You should be thinking about it. Does it make sense? Of course it makes sense that everyone of us have a sinful nature or a predisposition to do things wrong. It's true. We have a predisposition. Left to ourselves, we'll destroy everything. Left to ourselves, we'll, we'll, uh, men will, all the men will be womanizers. Who let the dogs out? He is a spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. All of us used to live that way. Following the passion desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. We used to live by pa following the passions and desires. Now understand this. Just because you have a desire, it doesn't make it right. Because there's right desires and then there's what? Wrong desire. So what's happening, we're living in a society that has wrong desires. And what they're trying to do is legalize their wrong desires and normalize it. But they don't want to call it sin. And until you call it sin, you can't be redeemed. You can't be set free. You can't be restored. You can't experience a second birth. We used to live that way. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger. And all it's saying is, if you live a life of sin... At the end, you're going to live a life, and at the end, you're going to live a life that you're going to be judged by the way you've lived. And no one ever is going to be saved by trying to live godly without God changing your nature. You're going to need, an inner, you're going to need God to come in or else nothing's going to change. Our sinful nature, our sinful nature, like we mentioned, cannot be saved. You need a spiritual birth. So now... Left to ourselves, we've just become more depraved. And, and the, the skid for our world is like really been accelerated in the last few years. Um, I know this, 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 um, this last or two weeks ago, Governor, Governor Newsom, he passed a law um, that if your child um, wants to transition um, and, and they want to begin to even medicate your child and, and, and give them drugs... To, to transition your child from a boy to a girl or from a girl to a boy, they do not have to tell you as parents. That law was passed in California two weeks ago. If we understand these laws, what, what the idea is, is to strip us of what's right and wrong. And just because there's a law that backs up your inclinations and your desires, it doesn't make it right. And when you stand before God, you're still going to be guilty. Okay, but now what we're doing, um, the opening ceremonies for uh, the Olympic Games, it should be, it should be something that usually was artful. Um, it was showing art, which glorifies, a lot of art glorifies God. But now this is what they did um, this week, or this week, what they did was something super sacrilegious. They, re, they redid the, la, the Lord's Supper, and they replaced all the disciples with, with drag queens. This is it right here. That was in the opening ceremony. I want you to understand. What I said, man, don't get offended. This, this is what it is. It's mockery. There's one thing that you're struggling with a sin. There's another thing to become flamboyant and begin to mock God and begin to actually fight against God. This is the most holy picture that we have of Jesus meeting with his disciples before he died, before he gets arrested and dies for our sins. They open up their ceremonies with this event. Left to ourselves, we become more and more depraved. This is where our world is headed. Be careful that you don't get caught up in the mindset of the sinful nature and begin to make it your identity or your mindset or your, your, your take on the world. You need to get your worldview, not from society, not from CNN news, not even Fox news. You need to get your worldview, not from the view. You need to get your worldview from Scripture. And I got good news for you. 
It doesn't matter how savage you've been. It doesn't matter what crimes you committed. It doesn't matter what sins that you've been involved with. I got good news for you. We're all in the same boat. And every single one of us can be forgiven. Every single one of us can be saved. Every single one of us can experience a new life. Say this. Thank God for the second birth. Birth number two. And I guess that's all I'll be covering is birth number two. I can feel it. Being the second birth, Jesus said, is a must. Say it with me. The second birth is a what? So uh, if I ask you, have you been born again, don't think born again is a religion. Born again is an experience. Born again, born, being born again is a must. And being born again is a miracle. It's a miracle. You're transformed. We're not trying to make you better people. We want you to be transformed by the power of God where you become a brand new person. It's totally different. Right? So let's take a look at this. In John 3.3, 3, Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. I tell you the what? Now Jesus is saying, like, what I'm telling you, if I'm, if I'm telling you the truth, he wants to stop and he wants to say, look, I, what I'm telling you, I want you to think about, it's absolutely true. And he was talking to uh, a man named Nicodemus that was a religious leader or you would even say a, a scholar in, in the Torah or the word of God. And he had a private meeting at night with Jesus. Um, he didn't want anybody to know he was meeting up with Jesus. And Jesus, as soon as he comes, he tells him this statement because he knew what Nicodemus was looking for. He knew religion. Nicodemus knew, I've been practicing religion to the best that I could. I've been doing the best that I could, but I know there's something missing. I'm still empty. I'm still depressed. And I'm not sure if I were to die right now where I'd spend eternity. So everything I'm doing, there's still something missing. And then Jesus says, this is a problem. You still have a sinful nature. And he says this. Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Unless you are born again, say it with me. This is a conditional statement. You cannot see the kingdom of God. That means without you being born again, you cannot, you'll never see heaven. You'll never experience the power of God in your life. You'll never see miracles. You'll never be set free from your depression. You'll never be set free from your addiction. You'll never overcome your past. You can never, you can never become a, a patient person. You can never become a joyful person. You can never have, you can never have peace in your life. Unless you're born again. You'll never see kingdom results in your life until you make Jesus your king. Until you're transformed. This right here is really important because there's only two groups of people in here. Those who just have a sinful nature and been born once. And there's a second group that have been born twice. And as we said, um, unless you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Verse 7. So don't be surprised when I say you must be born again. Say with me. You what? He didn't say you should. It would be a good idea. If you're not born again, you'll never see heaven after you die. As a matter of fact, if you're not born again, you'll never experience the fullness of God's blessing on earth. This is what's going to happen. Without the Lord, your life is going to become a living hell. It's going to get darker. It's going to become more fearful. You're going to become more hopeless. Imagine as you're growing older, you're realizing I'm moving towards my death. And I'm not more satisfied. I'm not more content. There's something missing. I've lived my life. I've made money. I'm headed towards retirement. There's still something missing. I got good news for you. Thank God that God is greater than the American dream. Thank God that God is bigger than your retirement and trying to buy an RV and travel the United States of America with arthritis. Thank God that there is life after death. Thank God that even if you've made a mistake your whole life, there's a God that can redeem your life. There's a God that can set you free. There's a God that can make up for lost time. There's a God that can, come on, that can give you eternal life. There's a God that can give you a brand new beginning. Thank God that God is bigger than your mistakes. Our spiritual birth, now understand, your, your, 
your physical birth came with a gift from the devil, which is your sinful nature. But the good news is in the second birth, there's set, there's, our spiritual birth comes with a gift from God, the Holy Spirit. Oh, I love this. Everyone has been born, everyone that's born again gets the gift of the Holy Spirit and is forgiven of all sin. Now, I understand when you give your life to Jesus, you're forgiven of all sin. And when God forgives you of all sin, he erases it. It's like it never happened because to God it never happened. You're safe from judgment and the penalties of sin. A person that's born again has eternal life and has the power of the Holy Spirit living in them to live like Jesus, to overcome the devil and desires of their sinful nature. So how do I get the Holy Spirit? Acts 2, 37. How do I receive the gift of the Holy Spirit? Acts 2, 37. Peter's words. Now Peter's preaching. Now Peter was the right hand, one of the right hand disciples of Jesus Christ. He'd been trained for three years. Uh, and, and he wasn't, the, I would say, the greatest disciple. Because right before he actually, uh, right before Jesus goes to the cross, Peter, after three years of training, when they came to arrest Jesus, Peter was still had the sinful nature in him. He was still a gangster. So when they came to arrest Jesus, he goes, oh, no, you're not going to do that. I'm sure he said, just like that. <laughs> oh, no, not my watch. So what he did was he cut one of the soldier's ears off with a sword that he had in his pocket. He had a switchblade or something in his pocket. He was ready to throw down. This is after three years of training. See, see, it doesn't matter how much training you get. And since you're born again, unless you're set free, you still got your sinful nature. And, and, and Peter needed an experience with God to be able to be transformed to get that gangster out of him. So he cuts the guy's ear off and Jesus says, uh, Jesus basically says something like this. My bad. Picks up the ear. Puts it back on the guy's ear. Puts it back on the guy's head. And he heals the ear. He could hear again. And, and, Jesus, and he turns... To, the, to Peter said, Peter, come on, man. After three years of training, you're still bringing out the switchblade and couple, cutting people's ears off? You're making me look bad, homie. Right. <laughs> Peter also denies Jesus three times while he's being arrested. And Peter said, I'll never deny you. And, and two times there was a little girl that came up to him and said, do you know Jesus? No, I don't. The third time that, that uh, Peter was was confronted with following Jesus while Jesus was being arrested, Peter started becoming a coward. And this is what he said. He started cussing to prove he wasn't with Jesus. This is the guy. But this is what happened. Jesus told him before he resurrected, from, I mean, after he resurrected from the dead and went and ascended into heaven, he goes, Peter, I'm going to give you an assignment to go out there and reach the world and preach, tell people about me. But what I need you to do is go into the upper room and I want you to spend time there and get filled and baptized with my Holy Spirit so you could have the full born again experience. So when, you, when you're born again and you get the full experience, now you can re represent me because you won't have just your sinful nature. You will now have my, your God nature and be able to represent me properly because my spirit will begin to live in you. You guys got this? Are we still here? So he says, um, so Peter's words pierced their hearts. He began to tell them the first part of this message. We're all sinful nature. We're all sinners. And we're the ones that put Jesus on the cross. So they said to him to the po to, and to the other apostles, brothers, the people that heard the message, what should we do? Peter replied, each of you, each of you. Now understand this. You cannot have the second birth without this. I understand. I, and I don't know what it's going to take for you to do this. Only God knows. No one can make you. No one could twist your arm to change. I know your mama wants you to change, your husband wants you to change, your wife wants you to change, society wants you to change, your kids want to change, you want you to change. But understand this, unless you want to change, there's going to be no change. And understand, any change that's forced by somebody else is fake change. You could even come in here and go through all the classes, but unless you've repented of your sins... Each of you must repent of your sins. You know what that means? You finally got to admit that what you're doing is sin. We all know it's sin. Everybody knows you're a sinner. But you got to admit you're a sinner. Everybody knows you're an alcoholic. Everybody knows you're crazy. Everybody knows you're angry. Everybody knows you're bipolar. Everybody knows you're a liar. Everybody knows you're a thief. 
Everybody knows you can't trust any word that you give because you break your promises. We're all in the same boat. But you got to finally admit, I'm wrong. I'm, li I'm living a perverse life. I'm a fornicator. I'm living in sin. I'm immoral. And at that point, you got to make a decision. I'm going to turn from that life. And when you turn from that life and you make that decision driven by the conviction of God's spirit in your life, if you're hearing this message and there's a war in your soul, don't fight the battle. Let God win the battle and make a decision. I am done living the way I'm living. I need a new future. All I've seen is this pain and suffering and addiction in my family. I'm going to be the first one to allow God to change my life and make me a new person. Repent. That means turn away. And then turn to God. And understand, stop trying to turn to God without turning from your sin. So stop trying to add God to your lifestyle. I'm a Christian gangbanger. Right? I'm a Christian player. I'm a Christian cusser. That, that's, the, that's the confusion we have today. Um, it, right, you know, we have an artist that every, every, every word in his song is B, your B, your hoe, your mama, you F this, and your mom. I mean, it's just, and then I just want to thank God for giving me this talent and blessing me with this Grammy. You know what I'm saying? Thank God. Who's your God? Are you talking about the God of this world, the devil? Because that's the one you should be thanking. But understand, he might have given you a hit record, but at the end, he's going to take your soul to hell forever. You must be born again. And when you're born again, there's going to be fruit of you being born again. Because you cannot have the Holy Spirit in you and still talk the same way, think the same way, continue to sin without any conviction. There has to be a time in your life that you say, I've tried to go back to sin, but there's something with me, within me, that's changing my desires. I can't live that way anymore. But look what it says. Each of us must, must repent of your sins, then turn to God. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. So when you repent of your sins, turn from your sins. Make, I'm not tired of living this way. Um, it doesn't say wean away from your sin. It means you're done with it. You don't try to wean your sin. Oh, I'm just going to try to smoke, you know, five less blunts. <laughs> you got to make up your mind. I'm done with the blunts. I'm going to try to sleep with less women. You know, I, you know I, I'm, on, I'm on online trying to find somebody. You know, I got to hook up with them to see what, what we got. I got to test drive the car before you buy, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> now understand, you could justify all your fornication, all your immorality, but you're not saved. Stop trying to add church to your agenda. Come on, holy warriors to it until you give your life to the King of kings and Lord of Lords. I'm done with that. Lord, I can't save myself. I can't overcome these desires. So I need you to intervene. Change me. I realize it's sin. And then I'm forgiven of my sins. No one is forgiven of their sins until they repent of their sin. Then you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, the Holy Spirit, you don't receive the Holy Spirit as a reward for a level of living. You receive the, the Holy Spirit as a gift the moment that you're saved. The moment you, moment you repent of your sins. The Holy Spirit is, who's the Holy Spirit? It's the Spirit of God, Jesus Christ. It's the divine nature of Jesus Christ. It's the power and ability and love of God. It's the fullness of life and eternal life. So when you receive the Holy Spirit, I want you to get this. You get an invasion of God's Spirit in you. That's why you're not an improved you. You're a new that ne a you that never has existed. You're a superhuman you now. With God in you and his nature in you to be able to live like Jesus, do miracles like Jesus, Overcome sin like Jesus. Cast out demons that have been tormenting you like Jesus. Come on, come on. Preach the message like Jesus. God use you like he used Jesus. You could do it. But you're going to start having to identify with your second birth instead of your first birth. That's what that whole, that whole uh, Olympics is all about. 
we only want you to identify, I want to identify with my first birth. And they're trying to, they're trying to literally destroy the message of the second birth. Let's mock the second birth. We identify with our first nature. I'm telling you, I, I thank God I don't identify with my first nature. If I identify with my first nature, you would not want to be around me. I'd probably be dead by now anyways. Right? And I want you to get this. Just because, we're going to end with this, we have the Holy Spirit, it doesn't mean that we're letting the Holy Spirit lead us and guide us. No. The idea is once you have the Holy Spirit, you got to learn how to walk in the Spirit. Someone say walk in the Spirit. You're going to have to learn how to be led by the Spirit. You're, me and you are already born be, knowing how to be led by our sinful nature. Right? We, we're, we know how to be led by our anger. We know how, how to be led by our impulses and lusts and desires. We already know that. No one needs to teach you that. But just because you have the Holy Spirit, it's kind of like being a baby that has legs. Just you're born with legs, but you're going to have to learn how to walk. You're born again with the Holy Spirit, but you're going to have to learn how to be led by the Holy Spirit. You're going to have to learn how to be led in your conversations, be led in your emotions, be led in your decisions. Because the Holy Spirit in you will begin to speak to you. He'll begin to coach you. He'll begin to lead you to success. He'll begin to tell you, let's do it this way. Or let's not do it that way. Let's go here. Let's do that. And as you're allowing yourself to be led of the Spirit, that means you're allowing yourself to now, this is what's happening. You're developing an ability to walk. Now, my little, my little grandchildren, uh, my, my 18-month-old, I got a, I got a, a th- six-month-old at home with my, my other daughter. And that baby doesn't know how to say nothing, but she knows how to eat. I spent time with her um, while we were at Universal Studios or, no, no, not very far. And um, I spent time with her. They let me, which is crazy. They let me spend a whole hour with her while they were going on the ride. I mean, that's a pretty bra- brave move. So I know how to take care of babies. So I went straight to go get some food and some Slurpees and stuff. I gave that baby all kinds of Slurpees and ice creams and French fries. I don't know. It shut her up real quick, though. I guarantee you that. She knows how to eat. But there was a day that my, my the one of the 16 months, oh, he was crawling. And he started crawling really fast eventually. He was like so fast, it looked like he was a possessed kid. Like you ever seen those movies where they, he was like, like, what was that? It was him crawling. But now he's finally walking. He doesn't, he doesn't walk with no, like, you know. He walks, you know, a little, little off, you know. But you know what we did when he first took his first step? We start. Look at him. We're like, we're like taking pictures. Look at him. He took his first step. And we're all proud because he's learning how to walk. And when you as a believer not only have the Holy Spirit, you're born with legs. But you're going to have to learn how to walk. When you start being led by God's Spirit and start, he's going to lead you to the joy. He's going to lead you to the peace. He's going to lead you to purpose. He's going to lead you to power. He's going to lead you to your destiny. We start clapping. Look at you showing up to church on your own. Look at you going, come on, reading the Bible on your own. Look at you, come on, come repent of your sins and turn into God. Look at you falling and getting back up. And we're going to start saying, man, you're not where you need to be yet, but you're not where you used to be. We're going to celebrate you. Because you're learning how to walk. But look at this last verse. In 1 Corinthians 3, 1 says, however, brothers and sisters, I like that. I could not talk to you. Now understand, I'm talking to brothers and sisters. I'm not talking to sinners. I'm talking about those that have been born again. But brothers and sisters, I could not talk to you as spiritual people. I wanted to talk to you about as mature believers that have the Holy Spirit and are led by the Holy Spirit. But only I have to speak to you only as worldly people. Because you're dominated, dominated by the human nature. Mere infants and your new life with Christ. So I want to talk to you as a spiritual person, but you're not. You're a spiritual person. You have the Spirit of God in you, but you're not led by the Spirit. 
because you're still dominated by your lower sinful nature. So don't doubt your salvation and start thinking, man, maybe I'm not saved. No, 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 no. Instead of doubting your salvation, you need to start, if you're a believer, you need to start moving towards maturity. I need to start developing how to, I have to learn how to walk. That means that's why I got to show up to church. And that's why I got to go to Holy Warriors. That's, that's why I need to join a small group. That's why I need to join a ministry. Because I need to walk, I need to hang out with some people that are not only walking, but they're running. I want to see how that looks. I need to start developing. I need to start maturing. Because I can mature. And I can get to the point that I'm no longer dominated by my sinful nature. I could overcome the porn. I could overcome the lying. I could overcome the drinking. I could overcome the weed. I could overcome the crack. I could overcome every sin. I could overcome my past because the one that sent me is greater than the thing I'm facing. There is hope in the second birth. All you need is the Holy Spirit and then grow to learn how to be led by the Spirit. And I know that was my second part of the sermon, but I'm going to have to go online and give you this. I'm going to go online and listen in a second how to walk in the Spirit. So, okay, this is what I want you to do. This week, it's going to take some work on my part, but I'm going to do it. Um, just download our app, the Way World Outreach app. And then I'm going to show you how to walk in the Spirit. I'm going to give you three ways how to walk in the Spirit. I'm going to be online. So, so just sign up. Get on there. This is how you grow. How are you going to learn how to walk in the Spirit if you're not coachable? i got to teach you how to do this because walking in the Spirit... It has to be something you're intentional about. Just like you learn how to walk, you have to learn how to walk. It's not going to naturally happen. Naturally, we're sinners. So stop waiting for you to be poofed into your next level. And you're going to start now realizing, I'm not going to be poofed into my next level. I'm going to have to exercise into my next level. I'm going to have to practice into my next level. I'm going to have to be alert that I'm in a process of growth. And I'm going to put in my part and God will do his part. Amen? Let's all stand up. Awesome. Whew. Praise the Lord. How many got something out of this? I mean, don't lie to me if you didn't. I'm just kidding. Praise the Lord. But I'm going to dismiss it in just a second. Um, I want to let you know I'm glad to be back. I love you guys. And, and God has such a great purpose for your life. I wish I could do the second part. But I'll, I'll do it online. We're, we're going to get there online. I have to finish the sermon because I need to teach you how to walk in the spirit. It's going to change your thinking. It's going to change your life forever. The second part, this is just showing you the need of the second part. We're going to get there. But before we could actually, I want you to, I'm going to dismiss you in just a second. But before we could actually begin to walk in the spirit, we need to experience the second birth. The miracle. The transformation. The change. The freedom. When God's spirit comes inside of you, God's spirit comes inside of you, he fills your heart with Love. It's amazing. If you want to be high, get on the love high. It's crazy. It's crazy. We know this. I, I was listening to um, some interview with Will Smith the other day. I wish I could show that. I'll show it to you next time. Um, Will Smith did an interview and they asked him, how, do, how are you happy? I, how do how can how do we achieve happiness? And the truth is, Will Smith is lying because he's not happy yet, right? But this is what he said. He goes, "This is how you do it. What you got to do is try everything there is in the world, every sin, you know, go into everything, like buy everything you've ever wanted to buy, and 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 and, and buy your mansion." He's, he's talking like everybody's a billionaire. Buy your mansion, sleep with whoever you want to sleep with. It's kind of like that. Go, go buy sexual. Try everything. Get high. Do whatever you need to do. And at the end, you're going to realize that none of them that satisfies you. And he goes, so I need to do all that? He goes, and they go, he goes yeah. He goes, I'm so, so sad that you got to do all that to finally realize that everything in this world can't satisfy you. He's right about that, that everything in this world, no matter money, materialism, things, cars, women, none of that can satisfy you. None of it can make you whole. He goes, and then after that, then you have to look within yourself and realize that the most important thing is love. Well, Will, you're right. 
But it's not your love. It's the love of God, Will. And until you have the love of God, come on. And, and, and I know he just sang a song with, with Maverick City, but just because he's singing a song with Maverick City, unless Will is born again, which he's not, because we know in his mouth he's not born again, he still has a sinful nature. Even though he's singing something that sounds like God, he still doesn't have God. But I got good news for Will Smith. You're getting real close because you're realizing that nothing in this world, no high, no thing, no money, no car, no mansion can make you whole. There's only a God. You can win an Oscar, but you're still crazy. But I thank God that you don't need an Oscar to realize I'm crazy. I need Jesus right now. And today's your day to give your life to Jesus. Now. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take a drink after that. I'll drink to that. No, All right, let's end. Now I want you to think about this in this last moment. The greatest work of God's Spirit is saving a person, making a person whole, forgiving them, setting them free, and making them, giving them a brand new start. No matter what you've done, you could be forgiven. And I'm not asking you to change yourself. I'm allowing you to just recognize this. I need to change. I'm empty. I'm lost. I'm not sure if I were to die right now. I want you to think about this. That I would enter the kingdom of heaven. And Jesus said, unless you're born again, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. You'll not experience the fullness of life. You'll never experience the peace of God. You can't even change yourself. You're going to make promises. Oh, I promise you I'll never do it again. But you're going to do it again because all you have is your sinful nature. But there's a God that can help you, and he could tell like the adulterous woman, he goes, baby, your sins are forgiven. He goes, go and sin no more. And anytime God tells you not to jump back into something, he gives you the power not to jump back into it. But you need a miracle to stop doing and start doing. It has to be a change. But unless you're born again, you can't be saved. Nothing's going to change. All I'm saying is give Jesus an opportunity. Admit, I need help. Admit that you're a sinner. Be done with it and say, I want to change, but I can't change myself. Jesus saved me. Jesus changed me. And when you, when you say that and you repent of your sins, he'll forgive you and then he'll give you eternal life. He'll give you his spirit. He'll make you into a new person. You could actually say, my first birth date was, and you could give your eyes, but my second birth date was July, I mean, yeah, July 28th, 2024. It was crazy. That was the day I was born again. What's my birthday? Which birth? Which birth are you talking about? I'm going to count to three. You say, Pastor, that's me. I want change in my life. I want a new beginning. I want to be forgiven. I want to be set free. I need a new start. I want to receive eternal life. I, I want to be, I, I need change in my life. I want, I want God's spirit to come and live inside of me and make me a new person. I need that. I know there's something missing. When I count to three, I'm not sure if I'm to die right now. I'm not sure if I'm to die right now where I'd go. I'm not sure I'd go to heaven. But I want to give my life to Jesus. When I say three, I want you to raise your hands all over this building and say, I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to change today. I want forgiveness. One. And don't let nothing hold your hand down. This is a moment of truth. Don't resist God's spirit. Say yes to it. Two. And when I say three, if that's you, you need a new start. You need a new beginning. Or you're a Christian. And you would say, man, I need to recommit to God. I've been living a, a carnal life or a fleshful life, a life dominated by sin. And I'm tired of living that life. I want to be a spiritual Christian. I want to be led by the spirit. One, two, raise, it, raise your hand when I say three. Three, raise your hands all over this building. I see proud of you, young man. Proud of you, awesome. I see those guys in the back. Come on, this is the beginning of change. Proud of you, come on. It takes some men to do this. It takes some women to do this. Proud of you, proud of you, proud of you. Anybody else out there? Come on. Anybody on this side? Yes, yes. Proud of you. Way in the back over there. Come on. Right over here. Proud of you. Anybody else? Awesome. I want those that raise their hands over here. I see those hands. I want those that raise their hands to do me one more big step. I want you to leave your seat. And I want you to come forward. And this is a sign that you're done. You're done with your old lifestyle. And you're ready to start a new life. Come on. Come on. This is you walking down the aisle and giving your life to Jesus. Come on, just come forward. If that's you, you raise your hand. Your next step is to take action. Nothing's going to change unless you take action. Nothing's going to change unless you get out of your comfort zone. Then come on, let's give them a hand, church. Let's celebrate the greatest, the greatest, the greatest move, the greatest miracle. Someone get it saved online. Come on, just stand up where you're at. Stop your car. Give your life to Jesus. Right now, the Holy Spirit's there with you. Come on, he can change your marriage. He can change your life. He can change your results. He can set you free. You're not hopeless. Here we go. Come on. Here we go. 
Just come right here. We're good. Come on. We need some more leaders up here. I need some more leaders. Come on. Come on. People are giving their lives to Jesus. Asher's coming up with his, with, his, with his dad. It's so awesome. Proud of you guys. This is nothing more beautiful than a son and a father coming together. Come on, say we're on the same team. We're ready to go to war against the depression. We're ready to get to war. Come on, against the sin. We're, we're done. Guys, it takes a real man and woman to do this. Anybody could go along with the crowd and, you know, like, Everybody's doing it. Yeah, everybody's doing it because everybody has a sinful nature. But you got to stop following the crowd and start following Jesus. Nothing's going to change. And stop trying to do it on your own. You can't do it on your own. You need Jesus. I, mean, I need Jesus. I'm saying, I need Jesus. Without Jesus, I told you, 5150. Let's pray right now. The Bible says if you believe in your heart, first of all, that you're a sinner, you know it. Not, we're not dogging you, putting you down. The, the, even Alcoholics Anonymous knows this. Unless you admit you're an alcoholic, you'll never get set free. You'll, you'll never be set free from a sin that you're justifying. You'll only get set free from a sin that you're admitted. It's a sin. It's wrong. It's wrong. I'm tired of it. And you're only up here because you're tired of it. Sin was fun for a while until it took over. Until it, it came with its death. It came with its misery. It came with its chains. It came with, it came with, the, with the depression. It came with the anger. It was fun. When it first started, but this is what most of us are doing. You're chasing after your last, your first high. You can't find it anymore. There's something missing. And I'll tell you what's missing. It's not one more ba dime bag of weed. It's Jesus Christ that's missing in your life. You don't need one more Budweiser, one more six pack. You need Jesus Christ. Come on. He's the one that can set you free. You don't need to sleep with another girl. You need Jesus in your life. Let's pray. Let's pray. Bow your heads closed. Say, Jesus, I thank you. For giving me this message today. I know I'm a sinner that needs a savior. The price for sin is death. But you love me so much. I believe that you died in my place. You paid the full price for the penalty of my sins. And then you rose from the dead. You conquered death. So my sins can be forgiven. Forgive me, Lord, for all my sins. I open my heart and I ask you now, fill me with your Holy Spirit. I receive forgiveness and I receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Set me free from all addiction. Heal my broken heart. Make me a new person. I am saved. I am born again. And I am a follower, a disciple of Jesus Christ for the rest of my life. Thank you, Jesus. You're my, you're my father. And I'm your child. This is a new start. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. We're going to pray with you. We're going to help you. Your next step is to get baptized. Join our classes, Holy Wars. One, two, three coming up. We love you. God bless you, church.